Hello everyone, this is Suzanne at the Gospel Truth. And I got my drink ready here. My voice has been a little dry today. This is um rip root beer. It's a packet, like you buy crystal light, they have it in the packets and stuff. Well, this is little packets of root beer flavor, and it's pretty good. The only place I can find it is at my Dollar Tree. All right, we'll talk more after our study today. We are in the book of Ephesians, verses one, chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. And we are working our way through Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. These are the prison epistles that Paul wrote while he was imprisoned. Still doing God's work, even in prison. Not sitting there feeling sorry for himself, moping, crying, um... That never does any good. But he is still writing out letters to his beloved churches and people that he loves to encourage them in the faith. All right, let's begin our study today. God has known you for a very long time, like eternity. Did you know that? Did you know that God knit you in your mother's womb? Yes, he was there right at the creation of your life. Let's read Ephesians 1, 4 through 6. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made accepted in the Beloved. Before every person was even born, God knew all about them. Even back before the world was created, God, who is infinite and who always existed, knew each person who would live on the earth. Even before he formed the earth, God had a plan. And he wanted every person to become his child. But because God wanted each person to choose that privilege, he gave mankind the freedom to make a decision about whether or not they would be saved from their sins. He longed for each person to desire to be a part of his family, but not be forced. Forcing a person never works because they will maybe eventually give in, but then fall away. We can't force it. They have to accept it or not. And when a person makes that decision, they instantly become holy and blameless in his sight. Praise the Lord. I remember when I was baptized and when I came up out of the water, this is feeling of cleanliness that I'm forgiven. I found peace. I found joy. That is possible only because they are forgiven of all their sins through Jesus' death in their place and considered holy and without blame. That's the grace Paul talked about in verse 2. He's talking about something that is available as a gift, not something earned. You can never do enough works to earn your way into heaven. It don't work that way. It's by the grace of God and our acceptance as Jesus as our Lord and Savior. When such a wonderful gift is understood as a fabulous opportunity, how can anyone not praise God for his incredible love? That's why Paul wrote that God's acceptance and adoption of men and women will bring praise to him. His gracious love will be recognized and given the credit he deserves. God is not extending favor because we deserve it. If that were the case, then we should be praised. No, he is extending favor because he is wonderfully loving, and therefore he should be declared great. Isn't it great to be loved, to be truly loved by somebody? My daughter loves me to pieces. In fact, later today, she's coming over. She's bringing a chicken casserole, some hamburger soup, some smoked fish, and an apple crisp. She just called me and said, Mom, I'm coming over. I got some, some food for you. Wow, isn't that amazing? 
and she's always watching out for me. All I gotta do is call her, she'll drop everything if I need something, or make arrangements to when would be a good time. And now you take that times a zillion kabillion, it's how much God loves us. And by the way, I am so grateful for my daughter. It's great to be loved, truly loved. The spiritual concept of predestination that Paul writes about is a controversial one, and it has been for centuries. Although there are many variations in this controversy, there are three major belief systems, and we're going to talk about those right now. Calvinism or Reformed Theology. This belief system purports that God in his sovereignty determines who becomes saved by grace and that there is no human free will involved because the depraved nature of man makes him unable to choose. As a result, a person cannot lose their salvation. Okay, I'm going to try to pronounce this next one. Arminism. The theory was begun in the 1590s by Jacobs Arminus, who died in 1609. In 1610, in a 1610 declaration called the Reconstance, his followers determined that each person has a choice whether or not to accept or reject Christ. They also said that a person could lose their salvation. This is the one that I believe. Because in the Bible, there are verses that say, you know, you never know where you're going to be snatching your brother out of the fires of hell. And I think people have become Christians. And we, we got the... Um, lesson where when when the seed fell on different grounds and if i was to go back to my sinful ways i need to repent and come back to god prodigal son he came back to his father and that's what i believe personally Harmonizing reason and faith. In the late 1200s, a group of theologians explained predestination as God knowing everything and therefore predestining to salvation to those whom he knew would choose to accept Christ free will. I agree with that one too. All right. I don't know if some of you believe in Calvinism or, right or not. That's your choice. But I kind of go with the, the, the second and the third one myself. Okay. One way of viewing predestination is to think in terms of adopting a child. This is a really good analogy. An adopted baby doesn't have any choice as to what family he will join. Instead, the mother and father choose that child because they love him. The child doesn't do anything to deserve it. He just lies there, not able to speak, walk, or feed himself. But the parents are thrilled that they now have him in their family. They want him to benefit from their name and all the wonderful things they plan to give him. Sometimes adopting human parents won't even have seen the child before meeting him at the adoption agency, and they're already in love with that baby. In Roman law, which the Apostle Paul knew well as a Roman citizen, the adopted child had just as many benefits and privileges as a blood child even if he had originally been a slave in the household. In addition, even a blood child would have to be publicly declared as a son, a rite usually taking place when he was a teenager. Prior to the public declaration, the adopted child was a slave. Afterward, he was entitled to full privileges and responsibilities. Paul was trying to show his readers how strong their relationship with God was based upon his choosing them even before they could love him back. Spiritual adoption is God's way of saying we belong in the family of God. Jesus is the Son of God and has always existed. He was the creator of the world and God's right-hand man. Even before he created the universe, God knew humans would sin and planned for Jesus to come to earth to die for the sins of the world's people. From eternity past, Jesus knew the plan and cooperated with us. This is what Charles Stanley has to say. Hold on a second. Okay. Charles Stanley. 
Freedom from legalism comes through accepting the truth about our favored position in the family of God. Those who have put their trust in Christ have been adopted into his family. There is no concept that speaks any clearer of acceptance than adoption. Whereas a pregnancy can come as a surprise, adoption is always something that is premeditated and planned. H.A. Ironside says, There is no such thing being taught in the word of God as predestination to eternal condemnation. If men are lost, they are lost because they do not come to Christ. When men do come to Christ, they learn the wonderful secret that God has foreknown it from all eternity. Paul's comments should make us feel very secure because we realize that God's love has nothing to do with our performance. If he loved us and wanted us to be a part of his family, even before we were born, then his love is rooted in his own character, not our good or bad behavior. God is love. God loves us now just as much as he loved us before he created the world. And his love can't be increased or decreased. Okay, that's the end of our lesson for today. Um, actually, there's a little bit more. I thought it was the other one, so let's do a little bit more. Bunches of benefits being in Christ. When we are in Christ, Paul tells us that we have an overflowing number of wonderful benefits to enjoy. He names several of them in the next six verses, but they aren't a complete list. He'll go on to report many others, both here in this letter and others. But in this passage, he delights in encouraging believers by naming several advantages. That's where we're going to leave off for today. If you want to go ahead and read Ephesians chapter 1, 7 through 10, is what we'll be studying tomorrow. Actually, we're going to do uh, Ephesians 1, 7 through, let me see. Seven through twelve tomorrow, verses seven through twelve. All right, let me mark this so I know where to end tomorrow. All right, I hope you've enjoyed today's devotional on Ephesians. Like I stated a few minutes ago, it is great to be loved by our God, who knows everything, who predestined us to. Um, become a part of his wonderful kingdom he knew he knew every single one of us that was going to accept Christ or deny Christ he gave each person free will to choose choose it or not choose it and if we were afraid of the Lord because and that is how we come to Christ that's not a way to come to Christ and we don't serve a God that is evil. We serve a God that is great, good, gracious, loving, kind, long-suffering, patience, everything. <sighs> Isn't it wonderful? All right, that's it for today. I am still working on items uh, for this coming Friday. We're going to do our devotional and then, or our, our study, and then we're going to. Uh, I will show the things that I've made uh, throughout the week. So that's kind of exciting. Well, I've got a few things to do before my daughter comes over, so I'm going to get that done. You go out and have a blessed day in the Lord. And thank you so much for spending a portion of your time to study in the book of Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians eventually. I do appreciate that so much. If you do come on, if you don't want to leave a comment, that's fine, but could you please, 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 please press that like button. I'm at 703 subscribers now, by the glory of God, thank you, and I'm hoping by the end of 2024 that maybe I'll eke up to a thousand eventually. It takes a long time to develop a channel and for people to get to know you, but I hope God gives us an increase. The more people that hear the word of God and study the word of God, the more the better. All right, everyone, thank you so much, and uh, Nana Kathleen and Joanne and... Um, Chrissy, those of you that pretty much leave comments every time, um, Michelle, 
Michelle at Crochets in Kansas. Uh, she is a wonderful lady. She has several lives during the week, Bible studies, devotionals. She has a crochet day where we just sit and visit and talk. And go over to Michelle Crochets in Kansas and sign up for her channel. You'll find her to be such a delight. Michelle, thank you for all you do on your channel. I love it when I can catch your lives. All right, everyone. Take care. <clears throat> and Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow.